Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Tempo Tex E35. The E35 is the 3.5 millimeter version of their recently released BHD. So the BHD came out a little while back and the B is for balanced. It is only 2.5 millimeter balanced out. So the E35 is essentially the same exact unit but with 3.5 millimeter output instead of 2.5 millimeter. For those of you who don't want to invest in buying new cables just to get a dual DAC. So that is who it was targeting. And if you look on Tempotech's page today, you'll see it's actually about the same price as the BHD, about $68. Today is a dollar off, so it's about $67. And I do want to thank the Tempotech official store and AliExpress for sending this one out to me and uh, do check it out there. So the E35, and maybe before we get to the E35, let me run through my Tempotech family. So my original Tempotech Sonata, which I wasn't so much of a fan on because it just didn't really work with UAPP all that well. And uh, it always used to drop out and pause and stop playing and I kind of got annoyed at it and just put it away. This is the Sonata HD2, which is the replacement of the original HD, and this one is pretty much an HD that just works, so I do like that one so far. It's uh, quite nice. This is the Tempotech Sonata HD, which I used a ton of and still continue to use it. It's just a very solid unit. There's a ton of reviews on it, tons of impressions on it, tons of users on it. It's just a solid vetted unit and uh, affordable and uh, a you know, I have no problems recommending that one. It's just a very solid unit. So this, as I said, is the E35. And uh, you can tell it's it's just quite a little bit of a uh, build improvement on the on the Sonata HD. The back is says high quality DAC and headphone app, HPA. So this is the brown version. There is also, I think, a black version. This is... 3.5 millimeters, and this is a non-detachable USB cable, but cables themselves are, you know, quite a step up from the original Sonata HD. Um, classy copper black braid there, so quite nice. And this one also comes with uh, two protective layers. I think there's a coating of glass here around. That black bit is actually glass and glass, so they give you two screen protectors just for those little bits and uh, the box is uh, quite normal it's missing the Sonata tin or the zippered pouch from I think from the HD it came with a zippered leather pouch which was quite nice so not sure what happened to those on the E35 so let's kind of jump into it as I said Tempotech Sonata E35 the primary thing about this one is it is a dual CS43131 DAC same DAX as the BHD, so same 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 sound quality and price as the BHD, essentially, just for people who are more interested in continuing to use their 3.5 millimeters as opposed to upgrading their cables to 2.5 millimeters. And please don't buy a 3.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter. You can't use single-ended cables on balanced outputs, so you do need to buy dedicated balanced cables for that purpose. So it is more power than the Sonata HD Pro. It was about 60 versus this guy is about 80. So there is a bit of power increase to power those IEMs that need just a little bit more power. If the IEM actually scales a little bit more, you get a little bit out of that too. So not, not really a bad thing to have a little bit more power. And like I said, the problem with the original Sonata was it didn't really just work for me, whereas you know, everything from these three essentially just works for me. It works with UAPP, USB Audio Player Pro, standalone apps, Tidal, Spotify, Deezer, Globus. I use all those. And uh, this one does do MQA and BitPerfect, just works with UAPP as well. There's none of this getting halfway through the song and it pauses and you have to unplug and replug. This one just works for me. So I think. That was an issue going back to the original, but I think they essentially worked out all the bugs there. So what does it sound like? It's got a crisp, tight, clear signature. There is a nice black background, but I would say it's more clarity, not as warm, 
Um, not really bright either, but um, you definitely get this clarity slash details forward sense to it. If you throw a dry IEM on it, like I was using the Loka High recently, which is a bit of a dry thing. On this, it just sounds a little bit more drier than what I like. So I like a warmer amp on a drier set, kind of opposites. And this one, I think I would use more on the KS1, which is a very warm set. I think just to push those details forward, I think it's going to pair really nicely with the KS1. So I tend to do opposites, but uh, not always. So another thing to consider when you're making an investment, I mean, this is, you know, $68. It's an investment. Um, so you can use this as a dongle. It is an HPA. It has a headphone app. You can certainly use it standalone, but do consider using this with a, a dedicated bigger headphone app, which will provide more power, and simply using this as a source. And um, the payoff with that is improved stage, and you're always working towards this enveloping or holographic experience, which you're not going to get on an affordable dongle. But using an affordable dongle as a source to a more powerful headphone amp, you know, it gets you in that in that right direction. So, so don't think of it as a one-time investment. I'm going to use this dongle for a while and throw it away because I'm going to buy some other headphone amp. You can you can definitely use this guy with another headphone amp that doesn't have its own DAC and just simply use it as a source, as I do with the own the own B1S. So, um, do think about using reusing those as opposed to tossing them. And secondary benefit, as I mentioned, you, you can pair a dry or a crisp sound with a very warm set and kind of get the best of both worlds. Or if you like this coloring, then, you know, that's your thing too. But it's always nice to have one or two sources just to see how they pair with certain sets. It's always, you know, a nice thing to do to figure out which of your sources pairs with which set. So do take that into consideration. So on the con side, the price is above Sonata HD and the same as the BHD. So my preference would have been to price it just a little bit below the BHD because you're only getting single ended 3.5 out as opposed to the 2.5 balanced output. But uh, that is the, what, the, what they did. So it's not really a con, but just be aware that it is the same price as the BHD. The non-detachable USB cable, you know, I think this design may not have afforded them the ability to do a detachable cable, which is why they did it. So it's kind of hard, can't really argue with it. The design is very nice. It feels really nice in the hand. But going back to the HD Pro detachable cable, that was kind of a nice thing. So stage width is good, but there's less height and less depth. And as I said, it's, it's really hard to find that in affordable dongles. So not really a con, it's sort of a a fact with some of these more affordable dongles. My opinion, it just needs a little warmth. It's got a a digital crispness to it, and that's going to appeal to you know, people who really like details. People like me who like a little bit of warmth, they're going to say it needs a little bit of warmth. So that's what it is. And if you use this guy for a while, like I did, it tends to get warm. And it's not, not hot, not blazing, not like you can't pick it up, but... Uh, do be aware that there will be some warmth emanating from it, and that's a normal thing as it tries to transfer heat to the metal case to cool itself off. So, but it definitely gets a little bit warm, and depending on where you have it resting, you'll definitely feel it after a little bit of time. So, again, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you next time.